Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Joni Young if you're new and thank you for joining me today for this painting tutorial of a little sunflower whimsical fairy house. I'm using an 8x10 double primed stretched canvas. The canvas came primed already and you can use a larger canvas if you like for this or a little bit smaller if you want to. I'm going to go over the colors that we're using today. First I've got Cadmium Orange Hue by Liquitex. I've also got another Liquitex. This is Primary Yellow. And I'm using Cobalt Blue Hue and Artist Loft Brilliant Purple. And for my greens, Light Olive Green and Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. I'll be using some Crimson Red by Arteza. And then for the last two colors, these are Golden Acrylics, Mars Black and Marit Sienna. And some Liquitex Titanium White. Okay, so what I want to do is start with the background and I'm going to paint it a deep dark forest green and then we'll build up some uh, little flowers and green leaves uh, and then we'll add our little house and we'll add a little bit of moss laying around it and a few more little purple flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and get started using my number 30 filbert brush. I'm going to just wet the canvas down a little bit. This is going to help me blend my acrylics a lot easier. I started including this little step at the beginning of each of my tutorials because this is a, a little step, but it's a big, big tip for you guys. This is just this little time it takes to add a bit of water on your canvas is going to help you blend your acrylics out a lot easier rather than going back and loading your brush up with more paint. You won't need to do that with just adding a bit of water first. Okay, so what I want to do is take my Hunter Green or Hooker's Green Hue and a little bit of black. And all I'm going to do is just cover the entire canvas up and down. And I'm painting up and down because that's how all of the grass and flowers are growing in that direction. So that's why I'm going to paint them in that direction. A little bit more black so it's kind of nice to have it a little bit patchy and streaky that will also help with your shadows and knowing where to add some lines um, for your stems i'm gonna add a little bit more now with a bit of both greens And then just pull from the bottom gently up one long sweeping stroke to get rid of all those little brush marks there. So now what we need to do is completely dry this off and then we can come in with our highlights and a few stems and leaves. One of my small filbert brushes, this is a size zero. Gonna get it a little bit wet and then I'm going to take some light olive green, a little bit of white, and just a little bit of the hooker's green hue and not over blend too much. And I'll just start adding a few little lines here. They can be a little crooked, that's okay. So just up and down. Sometimes you can use a little bit more pressure. And then it'll kind of change up the thickness of your stems or grass. And then a little bit of black in there is fine too, especially where it's a lot lighter over here. So I'm going to take a little bit of the dark green and the black. I'm just going to call it dark green or light green here. Dark green or light green because it's just quicker to say <laughs> than saying the full name of it. But I'll have a full list down below of all the colors I'm using. And you can use a liner brush for this if you want. If you're a beginner, I know that it's tricky using those liner brushes. So you can just get away with using a little filbert brush or even a round brush if you like. We're just out to paint little lines 
Tell yourself that's all you're doing. It always intimidates us when, you know, we're painting a certain thing, like a house or a sky or uh, whatever it is. So I do this, and this is what I've done, you know, my whole life. Just break everything down, simplify it into easy shapes, uh, colors, lines, and it's, I, I, that's how I'm able to get through <laughs> some really intimidating paintings. So that, it works for my students, and I know it'll work for you guys too. Okay, now I'm going to start painting some leaves. I'm going to take light green and dark green. And what I like about the filbert brush is it's already got that leaf kind of a shape. So I kind of go on the tip and then wiggle and then bring it back to a point. Or you can start from the little stem here. And it's super easy. So we'll start another one here. We'll have a little stem that comes out. Push, wiggle, twist and let off. Once you get the hang of it, you can do it a little bit quicker. It's already looking whimsical, isn't it? I've been loving painting, starting to paint my fall series. It's actually just uh, August. 2022 and I'm painting this but I'm always thinking ahead and I, f I honestly feel like fall is in the air already I was sitting outside with my grandson and out of nowhere uh, this breeze came and an orange leaf just kind of fell down and it was almost like in slow motion it was so pretty and I thought wow the summer sure has flown by there's the first sign of fall coming. I know it's not technically fall till, you know, late September, but I think it has a mind of its own and it's on its way. So I've been excited about painting lots of fall and autumn and even some whimsical Halloween scenes. So I'm going to hop over to this side now and add some leaves. A little bit of white in there. Adding a little bit of white and not over mixing, just kind of taking a little scoop of each color. It's really going to give you um, instant lights and darks. So then it saves you time, right? It's kind of like what those toll painters do. Press, wiggle, twist off. It really helps if you say the steps out loud. Tip of your brush, gentle pressure, then push, wiggle let off and twist let off and twist now if you want to create some bigger leaves you can definitely go ahead and do that with a larger brush um, and you can actually i've even used little flat brushes for painting my leaves now we can come around like this and add um, some vines twisting over Wrapping around. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and take a little bit more of my light green here. So come around. And then in there I need to add a little bit more black and green. So it actually looks like it's going around something, right? Take a little bit of that off there. And then just a hint of those greens. Not a lot of paint on my brush, just on the inside. And I might have to go back to that because it's a little bit too wet to add. Okay, I think we're ready to start adding our little house. And yeah, you know, I'm just going to continue using this brush because I can use it for smaller details on the house too. Um, but what I recommend doing is um, using a size of brush that you feel comfortable with. So for you, you might feel more comfortable using a larger brush and then even going down to, uh, say, a small round or liner brush for the windows and details in the door. Um, so you can use what I'm using, but ultimately it's really personal preference that I find. Every, everyone's individual and feels comfortable with different brushes. Okay, so I'm just going to start 
the base of the house, I'm gonna add black and burnt sienna. Okay, I'm just gonna take these two colors only and I'm gonna add kind of right in the middle here, a rounded edged or cornered rectangle. Okay, take a little bit more here. We don't want it too, too big. Otherwise, we won't have room for our sunflower top. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of white in both of those colors. So we've got white, black, and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to start going up and down. more of my white and brown. So this is one way you can add the base of your house. Or I'm just going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to show you how we can totally change it and make it look like little lobs or even siding. So a little bit of water on my brush a little bit of brown and black. And we can just start pulling this way. Back and forth, turning my brush over each time. Now it doesn't look like much yet, but we still need to add our details. So this is just the first step. So again, I'm going to do another layer here, white, a little bit of burnt sienna in there. There's just a touch of black. You can use black or not. You can choose any color that you want for your house. And then I'm going to go in between with black and burnt sienna. Start to add a little bit of shadow around the house and on the base here. Add a little bit of green with my black. And just gentle little circles, scumbling, gentle little scrabble, scrubbing. Okay, then I'm gonna add another little one right here. Some burnt sienna and black. And I'll just add another little rectangle. So the bigger rectangle and then a smaller one here. A little bit of white in with it. Now we can pull some lines across. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to add a little door here with an arch on the top and then I'm going to add a circle inside. Take a little bit of black and just go around 
the center. I'm going to outline the door here. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to add an art shaped arch to the top and then square sides for a window. And then I'll add another one right down here. Now I want to add some light, warm light, inviting light inside the windows. So I'm just going to, with a clean brush, mix up some white, yellow, and orange. And I'm just going to add that inside. A little dab right in there. And inside this one as well. So this is the first layer. I've got to dry it off. Okay, let's see. Now that I've dried that off, see if I could add a little bit more and have it show up a bit better. I just want to make sure you have enough of each color in there, especially the white. Otherwise, the cadmium yellow and orange will, uh, they're uh, transparent, so they're not opaque, right? They're going to dry see through and color underneath them that we painted first, the brown and black, will bleed through and you're not going to be left with a color that you want. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white now and I'm going to go around the trim of the window, windows. So it's normal to have the first base coat not show up very well and then wait till it dries and then apply the next layer. I'm going to just dab, 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 push and tap. And we're going to make this a little sunflower around the door here. Next, I'm going to take a little scoop of orange and yellow. Dab. Gentle little pushes and taps. Then I'll take a little bit of black, brown, and dark green. And I'm going to just come inside the window right in there and add a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of black now and I'm just going to outline the windows, very thin line of black here, right there, and then a line down, a very skinny line down, and a line across. Very little pressure. And this is wet, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. Make sure you dry yours off if you want it to be a little bit easier. I'm gonna come around in the front here and just outline the front of the house here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take my green and some black. I'm going to start this one up here first. So we're going to have the top of a flower, sort of a cone shape like this, okay? Doesn't show up much yet, but you're going to kind of scoop out and then we're going to have a little curly swirl 
line on the top. And then I'm going to take my light olive green and we're going to start from here. And just push. Just shorter little scoops. Then we're going to pull in some white now. You want to make sure that it's on the, the tip of your brush. And we'll get to the top. Okay, so I'm going to start with my orange, just orange first, and we're going to just gently follow those shapes. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, yellow, and orange. Okay, and I'm just going to start pulling gently and layering these little scoops. And white and yellow. See how much I have on my brush? You can just paint the petals however, you know, works for you. It's just really easy using these filbert brushes. I kind of just let them just push, pull, and let off. Gently push, let off. Same ways, very similar to painting the leaves. So that's just the first layer. We're going to have to wait for that to dry, and then we can add more. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. Clean brush, black and dark green. We'll do our little cone shape right about here. And we'll turn the curly top that way. Light green. So small that you might want to go down a uh, brush size. Looks a little bit of white in there. See this area here where it comes up and swirls over is a little bit lighter. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my orange. There's a little bit of a little bit of yellow in there. Maybe even a little bit of white, that's all right. Okay, then we're going to just do a few less flower petals because we've got a smaller little roof down here. Now I want to wait for that to dry a little bit. I'm going to come up here, this is dry, and I'm going to take a little bit of my light blue, well blue, cobalt light hue, a little bit of my brilliant pastel purple, and mix a little white in there. And I know these colors are complementary, so I'm going to give this a, 
kind of a frosty look to the top of it here. And I'm going to add it add a little bit here on the sides. A little pastel purple accents. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, this area here, I could take the hair dryer, but I think I want to start coming in with one of my mop brushes and working on the moss down here. I've got a one inch round mop brush. I'm not going to get it wet. I'm just going to take it uh, directly to uh, the black here. Black first, just a little tap, tap, tap. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to start tapping. All down there on the bottom, then right into the dark green. I'm going to leave a little opening right here, okay, for a path. Then a little bit of light green. A little bit more. Then I know it's going to dry a little bit dark, so I'm just going to counteract that right now by taking a bit of white and just adding a little bit here. So if you apply the paint in thin layers, you won't have a problem, but if you're using too much paint, you're going to struggle a little bit with being able to leave any paint without taking it off on your brush. So thin, thin layers. Okay, guys, and do not get your mop brushes wet at all with water. I'm going to go back over to my little filbert brush here, and I'm going to make a little path. I'm going to take a little bit of orange, burnt sienna, and maybe we'll have, we could have, I always like a few little steps down, and then leave a few spaces and just side to side little scoops making them wider here for the foreground and then just a little bit of white in there on top of each step and then in a few areas along the path Now I'm going to go to a small, got a number, is this a number two? Number three round brush. And I'm going to take some black and some burnt sienna. And I'm just going to outline a little bit here. Just a little outline will make things stand out even more. Okay, so I'm going to go around a few of these petals here and make them all a little sort of an almond shape. Now, if you're struggling a little bit, you might need a tiny bit of water on your brush, depending on how small the brushes you're using. And make sure you have your brush in a fine point, it quickly loses its shape, right? Now under here, I'm going to add a shadow, dark green, and a little bit of black. So I'm going to come underneath here. This is our roof line, this big floppy sunflower. <laughs> just a shadow and I like to use a little bit of green because 
It makes it more interesting. I like to tint my darkest shadows if I'm using black. And then clean your brush off and just halfway over where you left off with your shadow and halfway over the rest of the house there. You're just going to soften, soften. And I want to tie in this blue, purpley blue color. Mix it up again. Brilliant purple, cobalt light hue with a bit of white. And I better be careful where I put my finger. And I'm going to add some trim the same color for the door frame. Just a little bit more here to cover up some of those white spots. And I could add a little bit purple stairs. It's cute, isn't it? And then a little bit up there as well. I think it's safe to start coming in and adding some more petals here. So yellow, white, and a little bit of orange. Make sure you have it on the tip of your brush. Push it off. How some of these a little bit so you need a bit more white in there so that it's not so see-through okay then i'm going to put another petal in here in between these ones i'm just going to take a scoop a scoop of each i've got lots of paint on my brush you don't necessarily need to be using as much as i am I like creating those kind of ridges after the painting is dry and you can feel those little bumps. It makes the painting have texture and I like it. a little bit more orange for these ones. And we'll add a little bit in here. A little bit of orange. Okay, and back over to my uh, liner brush here. And I'm going to take a little bit of white, those same colors, twist and roll my brush, get a little bit on the tip. Just a little bit more color inside the windows. Create a little bit more cozy ambiance. And I'm going to go to my black and my dark green. Same brush. And right in here. Add more of a shadow to make that stand out. And we'll outline this 
this. And I'll go up and over for that arch. This just makes everything stand out a little bit more crisp and clear. Line the door as well. And if you accidentally put too much on, like I just did, just go over it. And I think it would be kind of fun to take a little bit of crimson red. I really wanted to use some crimson red and add it to the door. So I'm going to paint the door. I'm going to go in and around in between those petals. Paint the door red. This is just such a fun, fun fairy tale type of painting. You could paint your door any color that you want. Turquoise would be nice. I haven't, I don't think I use enough red in my, um, in my paintings. I'm going to add a few little shutters here. Just simple skinny rectangles. Uh, you want it to look like they're open. You can just add a little diagonal line on either end. So this, the bottom end will come out this way, opposite from the top. All right, then I'm gonna take some black clean brush and I'm gonna go in between and just outline them. Just to clean those edges up and have it stand out a little bit better. bit more red. Without washing my brush off, I'm just going to roll that red out into my yellow. as well. Over to my green, I'm going to take that light olive green and my dark green. Again, twisting and rolling my brush. See how it kind of comes out and gent gentle little curls up like that. I want to leave some spaces for those shadows.
I'm gonna gradually have that blend in. Take a little bit of black, clean that area up. Hope you guys are enjoying this fun little fantasy fairy house today. Let me know in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and the brilliant purple. And we'll add a hint of it there as well. Mix a little bit of white in there. Add just a little bit more, just a little bit of a highlight right here. So a little bit more white, just where it curls over here. And a little bit right in here. Okay, I'm going to go to a size 6 filbert brush. I'm not going to get it wet. I'm just going to take some of that light and dark green. And I'm going to go push and let off, push and let off. Focusing more on one side. A little bit of white there just to make it a little bit lighter. Push, let off. Doesn't have to be the same side on every one. I'll take a little bit more dark green. We'll have different shades. Then you can start adding a few little flowers. I'm going to go back over to my really, really small filbert brush, dry it off, take some blue and purple, a little bit of white, not over mix anything. And I'll just start adding a few little petals, simple, everybody can do this, little pull. Oops. I have no pets here in my studio. I don't know how pet hairs make their way in my studio. My little dog Tilly, um, has her sister visiting, my daughter and grandson, moved in with us. And Tilly's best friend and sister is here, so I'm chop liver. She likes to hang out with her now. Okay, so just a few little purple flowers here, just to help accent everything. Let's just use a little bit more blue and you'll get some pretty shadows in there. I like impressionistic looking flowers. So I just kind of, I'm a little bit looser about how I paint my flowers, but you can definitely feel free to take more time with yours and paint different kinds of flowers if you want. a little bit of that there. Maybe we could have a few little sunflowers right here. Wouldn't that be cute? 
I'm going to take both my greens, a little bit of white, and add some leaves, a little greenery here, a little bit of black just to make that stand out, and burnt sienna, black, add just a couple, a couple of sunflowers right here. Wash my brush out, take some white and a little white and yellow. Just mix a little bit more up here. I had too much water in my brush. a little bit here little baby little petals not a lot of pressure that is so cute gosh I have a lot of fun with these little fairy tale whimsical paintings and thanks to you guys I'm able to um, bring them to you by watching my videos and most importantly making donations to the making of these videos through Patreon or Super Thanks here on my channel. I always forget to mention that I have Super Thanks. I really appreciate it. Even just a couple of dollars really goes a long way when and buying paints and brushes and canvas. Okay, I'm just about done this painting. I'll take a little bit more white and dark green. Add a few more leaves that stand out a little bit more here. Forget about those little stems. And we'll finish this guy off on this side. So you can use a liner brush or a round brush, but I, I really prefer the filbert for painting petals and leaves. I'm just adding the finishing touches here, so maybe a little bit of white for the center of some flowers. little dabs. You can even tint it with a peach. Dot, dot, dot. Alright, well, I have really loved working on this and getting to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Feel free to paint along and share this video with your painting groups and your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. Have a wonderful day. Happy painting. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye.